Gareth, are you well? Um, I'm very well, I can't complain. Can't Thanks. Complain. Have you had a chance to relax since your collection? Um, a little bit, um, but you know, it's nice to sort of kind of, um, I get bored very easily, so it's kind of nice to just go on to the next thing, so. Mm. I was going to ask that actually, do, from the minute you've kind of finished, because I know you, d you do work on a lot of other projects as well, but from the minute mm. you've sort of wrapped up one collection, are you already thinking about? It kind of starts before the show, I kind of guess, because I have to, you know, like have a, a sort of um, a distance between me and it, um, because as soon as it finishes, um, I have to start the next one. Mm. I haven't got quite got to that point where I'm able to distance myself so much from it because I always have these very big slumps at the end of a show um, mm. and I can't seem to move for like a week. Um, and that's kind of goes back to when I first started. It's just, it's an exhausting process. So it's mm. kind of sometimes um, important to maybe try and maybe for the future to try and separate myself a little bit from that because it's not very yeah. productive for me. So actually like, before the collection's e even been shown, you sort of already start to pull yourself away? Well, you know, you just see the clothes for um, uh, such a long time that you, you know, it's, it's, I think it's important to get a little bit, you, know, you just want to get the show out of the way and mm. go on to the next thing. Go on to um, the next thing. I mean, the shows, especially this season, were super important. So again, it was very difficult to have that sense of distance. So. Um, yeah, and kind of maybe he's talking crap. <laughs> <laughs> so talk, um, to me, talk to me a little bit about this season before, because obviously we're going to watch your show in a second, but yeah. just talk to me a little bit about sort of the starting point for this season and what you were trying to sort of say with the collection. Well, um, it first started kind of a long time ago before, obviously. Um, but obvi it started a long time before my last show, like um, this was spring, summer 2013. It kind of started well before autumn winter 2012, me oh, and uh, my partner Carson went to meet his parents for the first time oh, yeah. in four years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a long time coming. So we went up to Glasgow and we had an afternoon to kill so we went to the Museum of Modern Art there. And um, th we just kind of chanced upon this room, this kind of video um, room, where they had this amazing film of cockfighting. Um, playing and we were kind of mesmerised by it and just watched the whole thing and find out who the artist was and you know um, kind of looked at it in more in depth and it was just this really kind of bizarre idea you know like these guys who it was kind of South American cockfighting um, mm. and the guys who have these birds you know they're kind of like their pride and joy and um, if uh, a bird doesn't perform well it's kind of um, it's kind of like a black mark against their family. You know, mm. it's 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 very it's very about very much about pride and very much about um, very akin to fashion. Kind of preening and plucking, and you know, they kind of shave their legs and they clip off their natural um, kind of back talons and kind of bind their feet a little bit like a boxer with these mm. huge kind of man-made um, claws so that they're more deadly. And then yeah. they have this whole thing when they get in the, into the ring where they kind of circle each other. It's a little bit like a mating ritual, but mm. it's, it's quite, you know, it's quite um, deadly or sinister in a way as well. So it's, it's, it's got a beauty, but it's also got a very kind of dark undercurrent, I guess. Mm. Um, so we started thinking about that and started kind of thinking about, you know, like, um, I'm quite into um, physical movement and mm. dance and <laughs> yeah. um, I was just thinking about how kind of similar that whole world was to the idea of something like flamenco or how mm. um, again it's it's very aggressive and it's a lot about stamping the feet and kind of personal space and kind of like this is kind of like don't come close to me kind of thing and mm. they kind of circle each other without really ever touching and yeah. Um, there's again something quite beautiful and something quite violent about that as well. Um, so kind of using those two very di <laughs> disparate <laughs> references, we wanted to do something that maybe told a little bit more of a story than what we normally kind of portray over the, um, with the show yeah. um, and try and inject a little bit more of a romance or something mm. a little bit more um, just adding a different level, because you know, I think um, this show was maybe a little bit more restrained in um, in terms of um, you know, it's uh, I always try and 
put as much as, as I can into it, whereas I think this was more about stripping back layers to, to reveal something that's just kind of, it is what it is. It's very, yeah. it's very just kind of monotonal in yeah. a way, I guess. Because people have said about your collections for the past, they've said like in the past few seasons, so well since you've been in Paris and you've become more <coughs> and feminine, more streamlined, and I think there's an aspect to that, but it's got... It's I've become more feminine. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, about your collections. Um, yeah. well, I think that, in a sense, is a bit of an oversimplification, but you can see why people would say something like that from mm. the collection. Yeah, I mean, you know, I always say everything that I do, especially with um, my shows, is it's always a work in progress. And mm. um, of course, I'm going to change from when I first started showing in London to, to now. And yeah. um, it's just interesting to sort of see where that goes because I don't really have a a plan, mm. so to speak, you know, it's, I don't have this, this kind of um, grand five-year plan about this is what I want to do, it's just, you know, I do what feels right and I don't kind of, um, you know, I don't have anyone really telling me what to do, so I don't have, I don't feel the need to hold back. If mm. I want to do something, I can, I can more or less do it, mm. within reason, of course. Um, so it's kind of quite free in free, yeah. that, um, that aspect of it, I, I guess I'm quite lucky to have that. Um, so each season, it's it's more about what I want to do rather than where I see my brand. You yeah. know, it's a uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's watch the show. Okay. I will pause, and if you want me to pause at anything, um, do give me a shout. Okay. Um, and where did the dry eyes came come from? The idea of doing the was it dry eyes that made the smoke, wasn't it? Um, well, before the show, um, we had about maybe fifty. Um, resin incense burners um, mm. around the space to kind of, you know, the idea with the smoke, well basically the smoke, I kind of wanted it to look a little bit like um, that basically weren't walking to the upstairs space of Palais de Tokyo. Mm. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit more of a, no, kind of, it was more, it was more optimistic than that actually. Oh, it was okay. more like, you know, you know, like a flashback on a film um, and everything suddenly turns all very sun bleached and um, kind of quite um, hyper real yeah. kind of thing. That's kind of the what I wanted oh, to have. Yeah. Um, you know, we had um, it was this idea of the the smoke. We wanted the we had these big spotlights in the roof, which you kind of don't miss. It was more for the entrance of the guests. <laughs> um, to introduce them to this idea or to this world, um, the idea of um, you know a kind of small um, sun coming through a, a window, oh, it's very like sun rays. Um, so that's you know we had to have the room very smoke filled, and we mm. wanted to have this um, scent in the air. You yeah. know, it's kind of a nice thing to consider to when you're doing a show to not only um, it's not necessarily about what people are seeing, it's about what also people are feeling. The feeling yeah. So it's, it's, it, was, it was the first time we ever really tried to, um, to kind of control more of the space than just what people see. <laughs> so that was kind of the idea. And yeah. also, also Palais de Tokyo is perfect for the, our idea of circling, because obviously the cat walks a square and mm. the models kind of have to kind of walk around each other, I guess. Um, yeah. And they never walk past each other, so there's that kind of feeling of distance and space. Space, yeah. Um, so anyway, we started the show, and I always wanted to um, try something very different to what we've done. I would like to try and do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the idea of trying to do... I keep saying that's the idea. I have <laughs> to try and stop. Um, we wanted to do something that was um, quite confrontational, I guess. Mm -hmm. and all of the girls' shoes had these kind of metal horns mm -hmm. that are kind of a reference of those cockfighting cock spurs. Um, so they're kind of cast or dipped in metal. Um, so we wanted to start with a girl with no music. Um, so you hear that kind of steel against concrete, mm -hmm. kind of um, a quite kind of vicious maybe sort of like, I don't know, it's, there's something that I quite liked about that, it's quite mm. raw. Um, and so yeah, we start with a, a mourner, a, a Spanish mantilla mourner. <laughs> <laughs> was this, 
because I, I did uh, sort of <coughs> something similar with Simone Rocha, and she literally designs her, designed her collection in the order that it came out. Do yeah. you do that? Or do um, you think of it, but maybe design it differently? That, that's probably something that I may be used to do. Yeah. Um, but I, it's, very, it's very difficult to do that because... Um, you know, like this, especially with this show, we had such a nightmare. <laughs> Everything changed, you know, because we make all of my clothes, sorry, we make half of the collection in London and we make half of the collection in Italy. Yeah. And trying to... You have to move it Yeah, there. and those two kind of parts of the whole don't meet until three days before the show. Um, so until you until they do meet, it's very difficult to know what's going to work with oh, what. Okay. So I guess you have to be a bit pragmatic about I it. always have an idea in my head about how I want things to play out, um, but I, I always try and, you know, I, the reason I work with a stylist <laughs> yeah. is that, you know, I value her input and I value my team's input and, you know, when I'm designing that's just me doing what I like to do. Yeah. Um, so in a, in a way I kind of you know, it's it's nice to to have other people's opinions. Opinions, yeah. Um, yeah. So we start with no music. And talk to me about those incredible veils because that was it was Noah Stewart that did the veil. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was the first kind of um, season we worked with um, Noah, and um, it basically just came from a shape that I made in in cardboard and sellotape at the studio. <laughs> um, you know, because obviously it started off thinking about those Mantilla mm. um, hair combs, um, but then maybe he's kind of trying to do my own spin on it. Um, so sort of combining that with um, this kind of silk chiffon veil over the face. Mm. Um, very hard to do that in Paris with these model agencies, though. Really? Yeah, I was going to ask that, because that girl, she's opened your collection, so it's like a great coup for her, but then also her face yeah. is completely covered. But, you know, it's... Um, they, you can in the pictures you can see her face, um, <laughs> so it's it's. But you know, without that, it wouldn't have been as powerful. I don't think. Powerful, yeah. um, so there's a there has to be some sort of leeway there. I mm -hmm. think. When Alex is do, is doing your makeup, do you what do you kind of explain all the ideas to her sort of yeah, quite well late on, or is she involved the whole way through? I started working with um, Carson, my boyfriend. Um, mm. This was the first show he ever worked on with me. Um, and this is the first season we ever did a mood board. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I hate the words, um, let alone the actual thing. That's very school like. Um, yeah. <laughs> do a mood board on Henry VIII. Um, so I've never done one before, and it was always very difficult um, to... Um, well, I didn't really think it was very difficult, but I think for the people who I worked with, it was very difficult to understand really where I was coming from or what I wanted to do, where mm. this time we had something that people could refer to. Mm. Um, so, you know, like with Alex, it's kind of, you know, she came and we just talked a lot. We talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just the idea of someone who had had pristine makeup and then maybe they cried a little bit, rubbed their eyes. Oh, um, nice. You know, and I think some, some people think that the makeup was so thick that it made the models cry. Um, I read that somewhere. Um, but obviously everything's on purpose yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know that was just a very last minute um, little touch from Alex to kind of add that glycerin um, or saline tear yeah. um, which I thought was quite an amazing touch yeah, um, yeah so <laughs> And with the with the fabrics, because obviously there was, I found like quite a contrast between the toughness of that leather and mm. the, the kind of more flowing. Was that quite deliberate, or was that more just because you um, like working with leather, obviously? Isn't it? Yeah, and it's the first time we've ever worked with horse leather. Mm. Um, and again, um, I think it was quite important to the idea of the whole thing with the show that it was horse leather. You know that. Um, it's 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 more interesting than a cow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, is it different? Is it different to work with though? Does it does it feel very? It different? is. It's got a very distinct sort of. Um, it's very heavy, and you can't thin it. You know, like with most leather, you can kind of thin it out yeah, and make yeah. a. You can make a different thicknesses with horse. It's kind of it is what it is, and you can't really touch it. It's got a very distinct kind of patination to it, and um, it's kind of a little bit more messed up. You know, kind of, you can you can get a cowhide or a 
a calf or a lamb and it's all very clean whereas the horse is quite kind of quite messed up quite mm. grungy looking so um again it was it was kind of i think it was important to sort of get that in there get that yeah yeah it's kind of a nice contrast with the you know like the silk and the the flowing things to yeah. have something quite you know quite brutal in there brutal mm. everyone uses this word but it's quite armor like that kind mm. of and with the sculpted shape and then that flowing yeah did you sort of was that the element of the enjoyment of designing it did you want to kind of make that a contrast or was it um well do you the see them as two distinct ideas i guess that's what i'm trying to ask well the 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 um the 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 things that kind of envelop the body and are kind of quite away from the shoulders we we kind of the, that was our chalice group um they're kind of quite priest-like um and they also kind of look like this kind of cup shape mm. um so um and then you know, we kind of want. To, I obviously wanted to start with this very strong image because um, mm -hmm. it always seems to be that the first looks the the yeah, thing. The um, or the you know, it's if you've got something to say, you kind of should try and say as much as possible within that first thing because people know what you you know. Mm. Um, it comes to symbolise your collection in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of an important one, and then to mix you know kind of to um to reprise the beginning with this kind of it was kind of basically exactly the same look but in a different fabric, yeah, different fabric. um is that idea of kind of repetition um so you can see her face yeah you can see her face <laughs> <laughs> again we we show a lot of groups within yeah. my collection and it's it's kind of we tell we, the progression of things that way it's not you know it's not as it's 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 quite well thought out yeah, it's yeah. quite um you know, you can see, you can see sort of curve or a, mm. a direction. I think. Well, because because um, you, you've always done sort of groups in your collections, but that's what I found quite interesting. Because you were saying this was more of a story than other ones. I wondered if that shaped how you sort of pieced the, the how you sort of laid out the looks, or whether you still kind of mm. did, did it make you want to have yeah more of like a linear story to it, or were you still quite happy to sort of? Um, well, I I knew what I wanted to kind of have at the front, and I knew what I wanted to have at the end. Um, you know, because again, it, with this idea of a flashback to something, um, you know, to a happier time, <laughs> um, it was very important to start with something that looked very mournful. And I kind of guess maybe something that people would expect from me. And mm. then to sort of move it on to something that's a little bit, gets a bit more happy and then gets a little bit more um, joyful in a way and then ends with these incredibly calm flamenco dances. <laughs> <laughs> like um, a final hurrah at the end. So yeah, it's kind of like going back to, I mean originally we, w we wanted to start the show with um, the last girl. So the last girl would oh, come out good. first and then and then it would, she would be followed by a procession of mourners and then it would kind of progress up to her again. So she would kind of, she would be the reprise of the whole show. Oh, okay. Um, but in the end, we kind of thought that that would, you know, without actually being able to talk to all these people, yeah. um, I think maybe sometimes it, it, it could um, lose a little in translation. Mm. So I didn't really, you know, I thought maybe it's just the, the, the best ways to kind of simplify and actually just tell something that's more understandable. Yeah, but you kept that repetition. Which is yeah, yeah, exactly. So can you talk to me about how you so talk to me about the making of mm -hmm. of that one and how are those trousers cut at the bottom? Well, the idea with the pants were, um, which again kind of occur quite a lot um, throughout the show. Yeah, because they were a bit of a thing. Was that um, the silhouette of the flamenco dancer? Mm. Um, kind of very fitted down to the knee and then kind of explodes out behind. Um, we tried it in a skirt and it looks very um, tranny. <laughs> 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 looks very kind of divine or, um, you know, it looks very... Um, a bit fabulous. It just <laughs> looks very like, um, like a little bit too on the wrong side of the feminine that we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so we dropped the skirt and we did, um, we did pants, oh. which have the same silhouette, the very kind of fitted down to the knee and then they kind of explode out into this this train, so they sort of like drag, um, drag along the floor, a little bit like puddles, I guess. So, mm. um, yeah, and obviously, um, they look 
the, yeah, the, the, there's a little bit of um, sadness to them. I think yeah. they don't look. Um, they don't look. Um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there's not that. Same it doesn't thing. look like real <laughs> carnival, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> which the skirt did. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the song um, that we used, um, we've never used um, just one song so stripped back for the entire show and. Um, Again, I found this song um, months and months before we even started to design the collection and um, it was kind of perfect. So um, again, that was something that I always had in my head and that's something that did inform quite a lot of mm. the decisions that we made, I guess. Um, um, and I hadn't seen Mulholland Drive. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask if you'd seen Mulholland Drive. I, I, I did then see Mulholland Drive, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of... Because it wasn't the reference. No. <laughs> it was just you like the song. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, but actually, when Shell Studio posted the film online, she actually, Rebecca Del Rio, actually commented on it. Really? <laughs> yeah, and she emailed me and was like, um, you know, she, she was happy about it. So oh, that, was, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but there is... Uh, it's interesting you mentioned the music because I was going to ask you about sort of pre like presenting your shows and having this idea of kind of a vibe and an ethos and a feeling, which is obviously something we talked about when you talked mm. about the incense. Because obviously you've been quite, um, I guess, quite sort of pioneering, quite um, flexible in how you presented your shows, like with your work with Ruth, you know, mm. you're not just kind of dead keen to always do a traditional catwalk show. It's about more about getting the idea across. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's yeah. so boring how it's kind of so, like, you know, I always... Um, in these kind of conversations compare, I mean it is, like a fashion show is a little bit like a tennis match, <laughs> an incredibly expensive tennis <laughs> match. <laughs> and you know, it's, um, you know when you see kind of what Nick does with editorial, um, it's just so much more than, you know, what it is mm. actually when as a designer you get to show your things, unless of course you've got ridiculous um, amounts of money to burn and you can kind of do what you want, which yeah. is, you know, Unfortunately, we don't live in those times anymore, and mm. that's not the case. So, you know, you have to do what you can, and I think it's important, um, especially as um, someone who obviously shows in Paris but isn't, you know, like working for a, a big, old, established house, to um, to kind of really think about the way that you present your work and how people see your world because you know it's it, you only kind of get one shot at fashion week and yeah. um you know you want to you want to you want people to understand what you're trying to do mm. um in the most succinct way as possible i think so i think that's yeah. what what i did with with ruth um it serves that purpose very well yeah. you know it's a uh, this is what you get and we kind of decide what you see because yeah. you know as soon as you put those girls out in the catwalk Anything can happen. Anything can happen yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to ask that, is it sometimes frustrating? And I was going to ask that particularly with this collection, if you feel like stuff does get a bit lost in translation, especially when you're looking at like a 2D image of it, because mm. some of those looks, like it was so much of that yeah. incredible detailing in the back, or even just little things like, you know, the shoes and how important yeah. that was to you. And it, a lot of that gets kind of... It is. I mean, it, it's very frustrating. I mean, I had my first show in Paris was, um, you know, I, I, it looks so beautiful from the side. Um, and um, and also with Palace of Tokyo because all of the models have to turn like four corners. Everybody who's there gets to see gets that. To see it, yeah. um, but obviously on Stylercom, every you know everything was white on the front and black on the back. Yeah. And obviously on Stylercom, everything is just white yeah. <laughs> with a thin with a thin kind of outline of black. And you know you lose. You obviously taken those kind of pictures of um, you know something like that. You're mm. going to lose. But it's like how. How how else do do you communicate yeah. your ideas? Because you know it's it's such a it's such a system. You know there's such a there's such a um, a whole kind of mechanism around how um, fashion works. It's, it's very kind of work within it, doesn't and it's uh, people are very um, very um, resistant. Yeah. You know when people found out that I was doing a video, um, my PR got all these calls and were like, we're not going to come. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's kind of the, the attitude of mm. of that you have to kind of deal with. You know, people don't want to know about it because it's like you know, and y also I, I kind of do appreciate it from their point of view. It's you know, the people have to go and travel to all these places, um, 
for like months or a month. Um, you know, by the time they get to Paris, they just want to. They just want to. S- <laughs> exactly, they want to go home and wash the, wash the pans. Um, <laughs> so it's it's you know they just want to kind of they don't want anyone to be rocking the They want li- life made easy for them. Exactly, they, don't you? Yeah. Um, which is again quite frustrating. So yeah. I I can I can try and push against that as as much as I can, but when it comes down to it, again there's there's this kind of like I say like this very definite system and hierarchy about how. Um, how, to do how to do things so you know it's, it's nice to play around with that but <laughs> can we talk it's quite an unfortunate stop but I really want to talk about this fabric um, not the fabric or well, the detail in like the la- is that the laser cut you did yeah yeah um, yeah it's the first time we we, we use laser cutting yeah. it's it's we normally hand cut everything um, but um, yeah we we thought we was that a bit of a change not to have that because Hand cutting's always been a big part of what you've done before. Yeah, it was kind of nice to try and do something that we've never done before. Um, something that, and again, something that kind of introduces a, a whole other level of detail. Mm. You know, the you know kind of it's quite like the idea was to do something. You know, mm, like lace, for example. Yeah. I always have a problem with the fact that it's always so. Um, which is terrible me to say this when you've got an exhibition downstairs. <laughs> um, but how lace is always so kind of flower based. Yeah. Um, but um, it's like, why can't it be something else? Yeah. Um, so basically, the idea was to take something, um, something that's quite me, this very like geometric, graphic, sharp um, print, and to try and make it look like lace. Oh. Um, so we did that with laser cut horse leather and we also later on in the show it kind of becomes more of a kind of a homespun thing where we did kind of all over sort of embroidery. Yeah, embroidery. So we'll get to that. So I'm grilling you quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of stage are we moving into next? Because you mentioned we had the mourners and... Well it starts off very hard and then <clears throat> it starts to sort of degrade down into something that's quite... Um, has more of a romance about it I guess mm. so you, again you have the same leather that you have in those first very hard structured looks but they're they're all laser cut and done in such a way that you know the laser cutting it kind of makes the fabric move in such a different way mm. um, so it's sort of everything's sort of kind of falling a little bit mm. a little bit like rain or oh. tears it was raining <laughs> when the show was on wasn't it as well um, it, was really it, it, it wasn't it started to rain halfway through which was so amazing yes. and we could <laughs> never have planned it um, and it's something that happened in the in the rehearsal which we did like half an hour before the show and it was the most amazing sunshine and then all of a sudden it just started pissing it down <laughs> like <laughs> torrential rain and I was like oh my god this is so perfect and I was quite annoyed that when the show started it was everything looked fine and then I think about this point when the grey starts to come out it started and it was so loud and at, um, at some point you could hardly even hear the music it was really? well when we were backstage it, it, you all because you know palatoki has got this huge glass ceiling and all you could hear was this pounding like pounding rain yeah so it Brilliant. was it was um it was a it was a lucky a lucky accident. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked to me about the move the move into the kind of the silvery grey. Yeah. Um, was that did you because I find it interesting you blocked with colour because I know it's not as simplistic as that because mm. there are there is definite change of mood in the cut and the fabric and, and that kind of thing as well. But what, did you want to make that kind of quite clear? Okay, we're doing something different now. With yeah. Well, we it was it was a very conscious decision to have all of the the start of the show black. Um, is that because it's kind of what people, exp- you said that before, <coughs> like that idea of what people Yeah, and then and also kind of, um, you know, that's our morning section, mornings, of yeah. course, sticking, <laughs> sticking with the yeah. idea of the show. <laughs> um, and, then we, and then we go into something that's, you know, a little Lighter. bit more light and optimistic and, yeah. I'm interested that you chose grey, but I guess it is, it's a, it's a, it's a soft. Look. Yeah, it's some, again, and you know, these head veils and it's kind of, it's quite a, a sort of, very pale lavendery grey. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very muted. Yeah, it's um, it's just something very different to that very hard black. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a smoky grey. Yeah. 
And this obviously because I thought I just thought this was incredible because it's so signature to you with that kind of geometric mm. nature, but it's something so soft about it. Yeah. So the the embroidery worked really well. Mm. Um, how long did how long did it take to do each of those pieces? Um, well, it's all. See, that's the great thing about working in the Italian factory. They have these amazing machines and they just do it. Um, that just do it in yeah. maybe, I don't know, like an afternoon. So none of it was done by hand, it was all done by the machine? Yeah, yeah. sadly not. I mean, you know, like those pieces are expensive anyway. And um, if they were done by hand, <laughs> I'd dread to think um, <laughs> how much they would be. But um, yeah. There was a kind of a, her like a, um, a regal aspect, which I really mm. liked as well yeah because very much so yeah you didn't lose any of that kind of poise and the femininity which i thought yeah and also with the the pace that we wanted to have with the show um especially kind of informed very much by the music um you know that idea of them kind of walking through um you know there's no beat um to mm. walk to but kind of walking through the music and kind of kind of floating almost mm. um obviously kind of in these very um, long silhouettes and walking at that pace with that kind of um, that kind of look they have with mm. those kind of spikes through their hair mm. they're gonna have that kind of regal sort of mm. air no mm. <laughs> I love that flash of red where was that and um, that's when we start introduce you know that was the first time I am um, I we've had red on in my show since yeah I was gonna say yeah for quite a long time um, and you were kind of toying with the audience because you put a lot yeah. of fashion <laughs> so we didn't want to just kind of have this whole red section it was just yeah. kind of a little um, you know like a little peak and trough and mm. then go back to cream and then building up to um, building up to something and um, is the red was it a bloody red is that what you wanted to get with the cream? Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was basically trying to, um, you know, like um, like the flamenco. Exactly, you know that kind of fieriness or that kind of you know red's got such a it's such a it's such a powerful color. It's mm -hmm. you know it's, it has so many different kind of connotations. Kind of so um, yeah, kind of passion, passion and danger and blood and fire and <laughs> <laughs> angry things. <Yeah. laughs> Well, indeed. See, this is what I mean, because the back of that is just, you miss that with the 2D yeah. image. Well, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and is that, is it, it's a raw hem at the edge, is that right? Can you yeah, it's all this, um, it's this fabric um, that we had made. Um, it's a very um, loosely woven, very heavy um, silk um, that, um, that, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it looks very beautiful when it's, it's frayed. Yeah. Um, so all of that fabric was all um, left raw at the edges. And it kind of adds to that sadness. Sense. Yeah. Do you know when you mentioned... It kind of, kind of dissipates away into nothing. Yeah. It's, um, there's not like a... You know, because at the beginning of the show it was all quite hard-edged, mm. whereas this is, becomes a little bit more soft and... Yeah. Mm. A little bit more out of focus. Because, mm. <laughs> yeah, with that kind of raw edge it looks a little blurred or yeah it looks a little it looks quite draped you know quite candid just all yeah the and again it's very different to how we started the show there was very kind of structured very hard leather things and mm. those you know we used a very um stiff kind of black silk taffeta mm. um for for you know those long things mm. and so you know it's uh this piece was just amazing <laughs> But do you like the idea, because you say kind of doing something that was very different to the start, do you like the idea of kind of taking the people viewing the show on this bit of a journey where you are surprising them a little bit? And you're yeah, I think it's important. I mean, um, I don't like to see what we do as um, such a, you know, I know Fashion Week's about business and people um, go there for that reason, but I also think that it needs to be a little bit more than um, selling clothes. So we, we do like to... Um, we do like to sort of push it a little bit. I mean, yeah. a lot of the, these kind of slash things, again, the idea of things kind of beautifully falling apart. Mm. Um, um, you know, like we, we, we made those in the studio in London and it's impossible for us to sell them because um, they're all very, very meticulously made by hand and um, 
we couldn't produce them. Yeah. Like we could produce them, but nobody <laughs> would be able to buy them. <laughs> um, so you know, it's um, it's it's important for me to have those things in there, though. Yeah. And uh, and again, it kind of helps to tell that story. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of both. There's a lot of a lot of these things that we do sell, but again, it's it's not necessarily just about that. Mm. You know. And this fringing was this the kind of flamenco type. Yeah, a little bit flamenco, a little bit cowgirl. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, was kind oh of god. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like the you know because uh, it's uh, we tried a lot with um, silk fringe and it all started looking a bit kind of kind of salsa class. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Which is what you love. So, <laughs> so we tried it with, um, it's kind of like a, a goat suede that we slashed by hand and it looks really beautiful. Yeah. I was just a little bit worried that if, you know, if you do anything with suede fringe, it instantly, it's instantly like, you know, the medicine woman. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that I didn't read like that. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of more like the um, kind of piano shows that flamenco yeah. um, dancers have. And then we start with the frills. The frills, yeah. Um, which again, it's something that I've never done before. Yeah, um, a lot of it was very new. Was that was that worrying for you? You know, when it it was. I was kind of it was kind of similarly as scared with this collection as I was when I did, um, kind of my first film with Ruth. Mm. You know, because it's it's a uh, it's not a risk. It's um, it's just it's again it's very important I think to take yourself out of your comfort zone mm. um, and you know as a designer it's like it's always important to maybe never have a comfort zone mm. um, and this for me was like I said at the beginning kind of taking taking myself away from maybe kind of putting everything that I have in my head on the catwalk and maybe just stripping it back into the the elements that are important mm. um, and actually adding to the story and telling a story mm. um, so so yeah it, it, it is it is quite daunting daunting yeah but I guess it's, it's like you've been in Paris you've been showing Paris like four years now in a sense so it is that kind mm. of quite nice I guess to kind of try something new and yeah and also you know I, I always you're always kind of maybe um, stuck in the very um, dubious position of feeling that you can't do something because it's not what people expect which yeah. is a very uh, which is a very kind of difficult one to maybe um get out of your head but it's it's something that's so important to react against because you know i was talking to alex about it um ages ago actually and um you know it's and she said you know it's like what are you talking about you know you you decide what you do you yeah. know nobody else decides what i do but this, this, there's always this fight between what people expect and what yeah. um, you kind of want to push, where you want to push to next. Mm. Um, but it's nice that, you know, this was I, a lot of, I mean, it's, it's very hard for me to tell because nobody would come, I would hope, <laughs> nobody would come backstage to me and say that was shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but a lot of people, um, have, you know, there's a lot of nice things said. Yeah, really lovely things. Um, which is nice. Um, and and I guess that gives you kind of a mandate to feel like you can. Yeah. Go on and do so that. again, it's kind of feeding on to next season. We're going to try and do something that it's important to be scared. I think you know, <laughs> um, it's important to have that kind of fire under your ass to kind of do something that um, pushes you because you yeah. want to feel like. Um, you're not just kind of churning things out. Yeah. Um, which I, you know, you know, with what I do, being a designer, you can very easily fall into that trap. You know, mm. I do menswear, I do pre-collection, I do women's show, and then you have to go into fittings and then do the next thing. Yeah. And you know, it's 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 important for me to not feel like. Um, like it's just a job, or oh, I'm like you're not challenging us. Yeah, because it's it's you know it's it's not a, it's not a very easy thing to do. So to to have you know you have to kind of keep the interest there. Mm. And I think if you feel like you're challenging yourself, I think it's uh, it 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 keeps your interest. You know, mm. like I said before, I do get bored very easily. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is like the red. Yes, this is our little matador um, bolero. So it's kind of the um, 
support it's you know it's a bolero with these sleeves that join at the back and it's supposed to sort of look like you know the trailing cape mm. um of the matador mixed with a little bit of a flamenco dancer so it's kind of the man woman hybrid mm. of those two um of those two worlds i guess mm. kind of coming together all in red for the last look. <laughs> I'll stop it else we don't get you. <laughs> and then and then it finishes. <laughs> um, but was there that element of leaving like a taste in their mouth with having that red, leaving that? that yeah, I mean, punch? to be honest with you, that show was so incredibly heavily edited. Um, you know, we had maybe like fifty-five looks oh, wow. that we I think we edited down quite harshly down to thirty-three, um, and. We've never, again, we've never really been that um, hard on ourselves before, but it was, um, you know, it was very, it was one of the most stressful seasons we've had. So many things went wrong. Um, you know, there was earthquakes at my factory in Italy and my production got moved and, you know, there was... And you were doing all these new things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, you know, as, you know, I don't deal well with change. <laughs> you know, if I go to... Um, Gatwick Airport and eat don't have my ham and cheese panini I get a little <laughs> bit kind of freaked out <laughs> um, I'm not a very good flyer so maybe it's got an almond or something but um, yeah I don't deal very well with change so it, it was nice to um, it was nice to just basically take everything and kind of rip it apart mm. it was um, it was a challenge so I was glad it was um, I never can really step back so soon after a show and um, be happy with something Whereas with this, it was it was a lot easier for me to kind of look at it and go, you know what, that was okay. <laughs> was not <mostly> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you know, usually it's like, oh god. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one this one wasn't so bad. So you're feeling good now. Well, I'm I'm on to the next thing. So it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> you have a brief moment to <laughs> yeah. reflect and feel triumphant. Well, indeed, and then um, and then on to the next thing. Well, thank you, Gareth. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs>